day, folks. Great to greet and meet you again in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's, it's always a privilege to share from the Word of God. And I'm going to do something a little different today. I'm going to do two messages. The second one will be um, an extension of the first message. And uh, I, I trust that you will follow the continuity and, and something in the message will help and encourage you. And uh, we're, we're going to talk about a man called John, John the Baptist. And uh, my thoughts today is in the form of a question which says or asks, what qualifies a man slash woman to be sent from God? What qualifies a person to be sent from God? And it is based on a Bible verse in John 1 and 6 that says, There came a man who was sent from God. His name was John. Today, we are about to meet a man that stands out as one of the most distinctive characters in the New Testament. This man had an unusual flair for fashion, wearing wild-looking clothes made of camel's hair, a leather belt around his waist, lived in the wilderness, ate locusts and wild honey, and he preached an unknown and a rather strange message at that time about the forgiveness of sin. His name was John. And the Bible says of John in Matthew 3 and 4, John's clothes were made of camel's hair. And he had a leather belt around his waist. His food was locusts and wild honey. And yet this man knew his mission in life. Isn't it great where you can get out of bed every morning or go to bed every night and feel within your heart, I'm on a mission. I'm going to accomplish something either in the name of Jesus. I'm going to accomplish something on behalf of the kingdom of God. I'm going to accomplish something that would bring peace and satisfaction to my own heart and spirit, but at the same time, enabling other people to live and enjoy life. The Bible says about John the Baptist, about his parents, that uh, Zacchaeus, or Zechariah, pardon me, and Elizabeth were very old and could not have a child. The Bible says they had no children because Elizabeth was barren and they were both well along in years, but they desired to have a child. And the Bible says one day Zechariah was in the temple of the Lord burning incense, doing what was required of him according to the law. And an angel of God came and stood next to Zechariah and spoke into his life. It must have been an awesome conversation, uh, an awesome time in the life of this man, Zechariah. And the angel said, do not be afraid, Zechariah. Your prayer has been heard. Your wife, Elizabeth, will bear you a son, and you are to give him the name John. His heart must have been overwhelmed with the idea that they're going to have a child. Excitement is in the air. And, and John's conception and birth was miraculous. And in fact, it meant Jehovah is gracious or graced by God. Sums it up pretty well, doesn't it? What is about to happen is going to be explosive. It's going to change humankind forever. And, and while the conception of John 
was nigh impossible by human understanding. His life was nevertheless prophesied way back in the Old Testament. In Isaiah 40 and 3, the Bible says this of John the Baptist, Listen, I hear a voice of someone shouting, Make a highway for the Lord through the wilderness. Make a straight, smooth road through the desert for our God. And, and when John the Baptist was active in ministry, he confirmed the prophetic word about himself that was given by Isaiah the prophet. And he said, I quote, he said, I am the voice of one calling in the desert. Make straight the way of the Lord. What a, what a beautiful thought that John is able to speak of himself based on the prophetic word of God way back in the book of Isaiah. So the question is, what qualifies a person to be sent by God, be it man or woman? What qualified John for ministry that would also qualify you and I today? Because as Christians, in many ways, we are involved in ministry practically every day. And apart from the fact that John's conception and his birth was miraculous, what was it about him that ought to be reflected in our lives if God chooses to use us today? I'm going to look at a couple of qualifications now, and in my second message, we'll look at several more. Number one, it was important to understand that John was filled with the Holy Spirit. And, and the Bible says in Luke 1 and 15, speaking of John's birth, he will be filled with the Holy Spirit even from, from birth. You see, the Holy Spirit is our enabler. The Holy Spirit gives us power and authenticity. The Holy Spirit teaches our mind how to be obedient to the voice of God. And one of the great attributes of John is that from the very beginning, he was filled with the Spirit of God. The Bible talks much in the New Testament about this being filled with the Spirit. For instance, it says of Jesus in Luke 4 and 1, Jesus was full of the Holy Spirit, and he returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the desert. One of the reasons why Jesus was successful in defeating Satan is because the Holy Spirit was empowered in his life and enabled Jesus to stand strong on his faith and for the truth. It says about the disciples, uh, this is really encouraging, on the day that the Holy Spirit was poured out upon the church, the Bible says all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit. It says of Peter in Acts 4 and 8, Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, spoke to them. It was the enabling power of the Holy Spirit in the life of John the Baptist that qualified him to be a leader in the kingdom of God. The other thing about John is that in addition to being filled with the Spirit, John was set apart for God, exclusively to be used by God and for God in the ministry of the gospel. In Luke 1 and 14, it speaks of this. It says of, of, of John, he is never to take wine or other fermented drink. What does that mean, particularly in relation to John the Baptist? Well, this expectation is a part of the Nazareth vow that we read about in Numbers chapter 6. And the whole idea of the Nazareth vow is to be separated from something and dedicated to something. 
I'll explain that a little further in a moment. It is a voluntary dedication of oneself to God. God said to Moses way back in Numbers, actually chapter 1, and in uh, verse 2, I think it was, he said to Moses, Speak to the Israelites and say to them, If a man or woman wants to make a special vow, a vow of separation to the Lord as a Nazarite, he must abstain from wine and other fermented drink and must not drink vinegar made from wine or from other fermented drink. Now, for John, the Nazareth vow would have been an expectation of his being separated from the world and separated unto God. And, and that prerequisite hasn't changed. The context of this vow and the word Nazarite comes from an old Hebrew word, and it means to be separated or to be consecrated. And so if you are separated from the world, you must be separated for something else. Because to be separated from one thing and not to be committed to something else far better, it kind of leaves our lives in limbo just a little bit. There's a Greek word called hagios. It's the word for holy. I think I've got it right, hagios, H-A-G-I-O-S. And so to be hagios, or to be holy, is to be set apart. It is different from. It is to be dedicated or consecrated to God. I became a born-again Christian when I was only seven years of age. And uh, maybe some of you have heard me use this illustration before. Um, when George Beverly Shea was first born again as a Christian, he was asked the question, George, how much did you know about Christ before you were saved? He said, I didn't know very much, but the little that I knew, it changed my life forever. And so when I became a Christian at the age of six, seven years of age, I didn't know a lot about Christ. I really didn't. But I learned as I grew. But that moment in my life, I was prepared with my limited understanding and knowledge to be separated from the things of the world and to be committed into the care and keeping of God. I wanted to love God. I wanted to serve God. I wanted to be God's servant. And so John the Baptist was a man separated from the world, separated unto God, and his whole life was given for the ministry of the gospel. Thank you for listening. Stay tuned, and we're going to further explain this strange man and the message that he has for the church even today. Blessings today. Amen.